Researchers from Stanford build a new chip, which is capable of training artificial neural networks at the speed of light. This is the first ever photonic chip which is capable of training neural network models. And this is huge. Let me explain. Today, neural networks produce amazing results. From ChatGPT to AlphaFold to AlphaTensor, supercomputers, which are now used for training models like GPT-4, are enormously large. They consume a huge amount of power and dissipate a lot of heat. Some of the estimates claim that 10 to 20% of the world's total power by the end of this decade will go on running AI models. Just think of it, 10 to 20% of all energy we have. This sounds really bad. However, it seems to be inevitable unless we come up with a new computing paradigm. And photonic computing might be the one. Photonic chips are different. They are different from all the chips which surround us in our everyday life. The conventional chips are electronic, so they rely on the movement of electrons in semiconductors to perform computations and to transmit information. In such a chip, a basic building block is a transistor. It is controlling the flow of electric current and enables logical operations. While photonic chips, they are different in terms of underlying physical principle. They are leveraging light and different optical components like waveguides, filters, and light detectors to perform computation. The thing is, light is the fastest carrier of information in the universe and it can transmit information while dissipating less heat and energy than electrical signals. Essentially, in such a chip, the computations are carried out by light, which is passing through tiny optical waveguides. And as these waveguides are passive, they drain almost no power. So the main power in the system is spent to generate light and then to read and to process the output. While in conventional AI accelerators, like NVIDIA GPUs, the most of the energy, let's say 80 to 90%, spent on the moving the data around. While in a photonic chip, for that we use light-based connections. Basically, we use the similar principle, which is used for long-distance data transmission using fiber optical cable. Optical communication allows low losses and high bandwidth, which practically means high data rates. That's why all long-distance communication went optical already in the 70s. So optical communication is faster and uses less power, and optical computing actually brings the same advantages. What I find super interesting about photonic chips is that we can practically double or even triple or even more the throughput of the chip by performing parallel computations at different wavelengths of light which means performing computing in parallel at different colors of light. And this comes from an amazing property of light, which has many different colors which do not interfere. Putting it simple, we can compute one operation with red, another with yellow, and the last one with blue. And this is vastly increases the amount of computation which can be done on a single chip. Triple the color, triple the throughput. Let me know in the comments below what do you think of this. And I will be linking another video below where I explain how this works in details. Check it out later. All these advantages of photonic chips are particularly promising for running artificial neural networks because photonics is really good at certain math operations. And we are talking here about matrix multiplication, which is performed trillion times during a neural network training. Multiplying two matrices together typically means multiplying the row of one with the columns of the other, and then summing them all up. Here, we multiply the row A1 to A3 with the column B1 to B7. Then we sum it up and get the result C1. These math operations are the most computationally demanding part of deep learning, especially when the size of the network grows. And it's estimated that with photonics, we can do this same at least 1,000 times more efficiently. 
Many companies realize this huge potential behind photonics, and they are working on commercial photonic chips. Among them, the most famous are light intelligence startup from MIT, Salience Labs, and Light Matter. For example, Light Matter building a photonic supercomputer for running large neural networks. And they already achieved a significant speed up in comparison to um, traditional AI accelerators. And we are talking of orders of magnitudes here. Recently, Light Matter raised a $154 million Series C investment round. And the future here looks bright. So far, though, photonic chips were only used for inference application. And it's really important to understand the difference here. Neural networks undergo two phases, training and inference. At first, in the training phase, a neural network learns patterns and relationships. It actually iteratively adjusts weights and biases to minimize the error between the predicted and desired output. The training process typically requires a large amount of labeled data and a lot of computational resources, huge GPU racks. Then, once the neural network is trained, it moves to the inference application, where it's used in the real world to make predictions based on new inputs. For example, when you ask ChatGPT a question and it's generating a response in real time, this is inference. So far, photonic chips were only good for inference application and not for the training. That's because photonic chips have struggled to implement one the most crucial algorithm to enable the training, backpropagation. We call backpropagation a backward propagation of errors, and it's a fundamental algorithm in training. It's used for updating the weights values during the training process. The backpropagation algorithm is propagating the error from the output layer back, layer by layer. It's used to determine how much each of the weight in the network contributes to the overall error. In this way, neural networks learn from data by adjusting their weights. Until now, backpropagation and training were unfeasible on photonic chips because photonics offers, let's say, more limited set of operations compared to the electronic chips. Then, in 2018, there was a paper published in Science which proposed an algorithm that theoretically could carry out backpropagation on a photonic chip. But it was never implemented on a real chip. Until now. In the new paper published in Science, a team from Stanford University first time ever realized backpropagation and neural network training on a photonic chip. Actually, they've built a hybrid chip, which combines the best of both worlds, electronic and photonic. The most computationally expensive part, matrix multiplication, was carried out optically with light. While some of the remaining calculations, like a calculation of activation function, was done digitally, implemented on the electronic part of the chip. Now let's talk what differentiates this photonic chip from others. So what is the novelty of this work? First of all, they managed to enable light propagation in both directions, forward and backwards. They've added light sources and light detectors at both sides of the chip so they can send light forward, so from left to the right and from right to the left through the chip. How it works? To put it simple, at first, the training data is encoded in a light signal. Then this light passed through the photonic neural network and the error is calculated at the output. Here they've added small taps, they call it grating taps, to each photonic node to be able to measure optical power. Then the calculated error is encoded in the light and sent backwards through the photonic neural network. And then the inference with the input photonic signal is measured. Based on these measurements, they adjust the connections of the network to improve predictions. Now, with all the above added features, they can detect and measure the light, which is going both forward and backwards through the photonic mesh. 
as a proof of work, they trained a small neural network model for a labeling task. And with that, they achieved 98% accuracy, which is pretty good. And it's comparable with accuracy achieved using conventional digital chips. And with this work, they demonstrated that C2 backpropagation can also effectively train photonic neural networks. I think this research, which enables backpropagation and training in photonic neural networks, is a huge milestone. This shows that AI training could fundamentally change in the future, with most of the computations taking place optically. But before we go into the main challenges of photonic chips, if you would like to understand deeper how backpropagation works and in general get more familiar with artificial neural networks, I highly recommend you to try Brilliant. They offer a variety of courses on artificial intelligence. These courses will teach you the basic math required to understand neural networks, starting from vectors and matrices to how artificial neural networks work, what is backpropagation, how convolutional neural networks work. Taking these classes, you can dive deeper in some of the concepts we discussed today. And they actually offer a separate course on reinforcement learning, which was used in training of GPT-4, which is behind ChatGPT, and also in the training of Alpha Zero and Alpha Fold. So it's really interesting to dive deeper into these concepts. What I like about Brilliant is that they really embrace this approach learning by doing. When you take a course on artificial neural networks, all these complex concepts come with visualizations and questions, which helps you to check your understanding and at the same time to straighten it. Apart of courses on artificial intelligence, they have also courses on quantum computing and computer science, which you can take. And they extend the collection of the courses every month. If you would like to try Brilliant, use my link brilliant.org slash tech and sign up for free. With that, you can try out everything Brilliant has to offer for 30 days for free. And the first 200 subscribers who will use this link will get 20% off annual premium subscription. The future of photonics looks bright to me. However, there are still some technical challenges. First of all, it's scalability, because those optical components are in the range of hundreds of micrometers, which is pretty large, and they can't be packed as densely as transistors. So you can imagine that photonic AI chips for training will be much larger than what we used to have today, and this will also limit the size of the model which can be trained. However, we still have different wavelengths, so different colors as a leverage here. Another challenge here is fabrication, because we still need a special fabrication process, and it's in general costs more. And that's clear, because there is not much volume. Photonic chips are fabricated in silicon photonic technology, to be specific, silicon on insulator photonic IC technology. In the past, it was mostly done by foundries like Global Foundries and Intel, we all know Intel as a pioneer of silicon photonics technology because they've been experimenting with it since 2006 for their silicon transceiver technology, and they've been investing a lot of money in it. Last year, Netherlands invested 1.1 billion euros in photonic chip industry. They've actually invested in Photon Delta. It's a photonic ecosystem which consists of 26 companies from Europe. And this includes research institutes and companies involved in design, fabrication and packaging of photonic chips. And they are already collaborating with ASML and IMAC to build a pilot line for silicon photonics. How wonderful! And with this new funding, they plan to ramp up wafer production of more than 100,000 wafers per year. There have been a significant increase in investments in the photonics in the recent years. And there are indications that photonics will deliver on the promise. And we will see it moving from research to data centers. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next video. Ciao.